Friends, welcome to worship here at North Cross. My name is Mary. I'm one of the pastors here, and I am so glad that you have joined us online for worship. Um, You might take a moment, take a breath, prepare to experience the Holy Spirit, hear the Word of God, connect with Jesus today in worship. As you do, I would invite you to fill out your Connect card. Uh, Let us get to know you. Let us connect with you. Um, Share prayer requests and anything else that we might possibly um, be able to share with you. I also would invite you to join me um, in a word of prayer as we begin worship today. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill our rooms, our hearts. Allow us to have eyes to see and ears to hear your word, your presence, your work in this world. Be glorified by our songs and um, the words that we will hear today. I pray that they would glorify you and they would draw us together as a community of faith. In your name we pray. Amen. You're now invited to stand and join us for a couple of opening songs of worship, starting with I Will Follow. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone. Higher than my sight. High above my life. I will trust in you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow. Light into the world, light into my life. I will live for you alone. You're the one I seek, knowing I will find all I need in you alone. In you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you
come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your Lord, we trust that that is your invitation for us today. That we don't have to be perfect or even presentable. That we could be weighed down with burdens, grief, shame. all these things that we try to hide from the world, that we could lay them down and we could come just as we are to you today. You take our mourning and turn it into dancing and you take our weeping and you, you trade that for joy. And these are some of the promises that you have made to us um, but sometimes it takes time. 
Sometimes we are stuck in the stillness before the joy that comes in the morning. I pray wherever we are and whatever burdens we might have, that you would be near to us in them in this moment. I thank you, Lord, that you give us a reason to hope and you give us a reason to sing. And I pray we might find courage, a path forward, a word for our lives um, through your holy word that is coming right now, Lord, that you would be speaking to us, that our hearts would be open, um, that your spirit rest on Rachel, and that you might show us more of who you are today. Bless us in this time. Let us be close to you, more like your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. I am Rachel, Director of Children's Ministry here at North Cross, and I want to welcome you to Good Eats, our new sermon series for the next few weeks, coinciding with our neighborhood kid crew, our form of VBS, um, our theme, Food Truck Party. I mean, who doesn't love a good party, let alone a food truck party? We couldn't let the kiddos have all the fun this summer. Over the next six weeks, we will be exploring all the ways that God provides for us, which then helps us to serve others. Um, if I am honest, I really struggled writing the sermon this week. Um, if you haven't kept up, on the life and times of Rachel Griffith, you know, the greatest show ever. Not really. Um, <laughs> let me give you a little recap. Uh, my dads are not in the best health. Um, one of them had a stroke in January, and one has some health issues remaining from having COVID. Um, my sweet aunt recently went to live with Jesus. Um, my husband is dealing with ongoing medical issues um, that are strange and weird and we're just trying to figure it all out. Um, my sister is having some health issues and um, last night we found out that um, it may be time for us to make a really tough decision about our family dog. So a lot of, lot of heavy stuff, and that doesn't include like day-to-day -day stuff, softball, car repairs, bills, or the fact that our oldest just graduated high school and our youngest just graduated preschool. Um, so just a, just a lot happening uh, in our home, in our life, in the people who are so important to us. And so I just kind of struggled and wrestled with um, what I was going to preach about today. And I ran into the grocery store by my house, and um, I ran into my, let's call her my Aunt Sheila. She's my stepmom's best friend. Um, and she told me, oh my gosh, Rachel, I'm praying for you and your family, and just know that you may not see me all the time, but I am like wrapping you in prayer. And she said, I'm also praying that maybe, just maybe, you could have one boring week where nothing happened. <laughs> we laughed. And I said, yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Now, if you know me, you know that boring has never really been my style. Um, like you couldn't tell from the outfit I'm wearing or, you know, my hair, I don't, really, I don't really do boring, but it would be nice just for one week um, to have nothing crazy happen. We continued to chat for a little bit, and then she left me with this. God will prepare you for whatever comes next. God's going to prepare you for whatever comes. It wasn't a glossed over, 
God's got this, or a false promise, everything's going to be okay. It felt like it had some depth. There's some real truth to that, that God will prepare me. And then as I went through the rest of the store, I just prayed and marveled at the fact that the Holy Spirit showed up in the produce department of this little grocery store on the east end of Independence. And how funny it is the way that God works in and through us and the relationships that we have. And now here we are. And I pray that God has prepared me to share a little bit of my heart with you today. Um, so, where do you eat in your house? Um, if you're joining us online, uh, type in the chat where it is you eat in, that, in your house. Do you eat in the dining room? Do you eat in the kitchen? TV trays in the living room? On a blanket in the yard? In the car on the way to ball practice? Many of us have probably heard that the heart of the home is the kitchen. It is where people come to get fed, I believe, physically and mentally. It's a place where love is found. And I would push a little further to say the table is probably the heart of the home. But now let's define what makes a table. When we think of a table, we think of something that has four legs, a sturdy top, chairs, right? The actual definition of a table. Growing up, we always ate dinner at the table. It was something we always did. Um, no matter where we were, everyone came together to eat dinner at the table. When we were 14, we moved to this new house, and it didn't have a traditional place for a table. It was like this, um, I don't even know what you would call it, like a breakfast bar type thing, but it was like there was a breakfast bar with three chairs, but then there was this lower level with two chairs. So we actually, us kids set up at the top and like looked down on our parents, which was kind of weird. <laughs> um, but that's where, that's where we ate. It was a little different, um, but we were still able to eat together. Saturday pancakes at my dad's with the Snoopy pancake slash waffle maker. You had to be really quick or they would be gone. Six hungry kids at breakfast. Not enough chairs for all of us at the table meant we either rotated breakfast or some of us sat on the floor with a plate on our lap. Sunday dinners at my grandma's where we, could sque we couldn't squeeze one more chair into the table. So we made spots around the table like we used the couch. The fireplace place mantle is like the spot where everybody wants to sit. Um, or the, some extra chairs that we have lying around in the kitchen. All different ways of eating. Still a time when we gathered around food and shared stories. When I look back at those times, it didn't matter that there wasn't a physical table. We made a table where we were. We laughed, we cried, we shared food, stories. That is what I love. Gathering together in a place where life is shared. Many nights at my house, we are running from work to school, to home, to practice, a softball game, or a church event. Keep in mind, we live 30 minutes away from North Cross, so it's a trek trying to get everything in. Our time is limited and rushed, but regardless of where we are, we really try to eat together and create that space for each other to share what's going on with our lives, struggles we're having, funny things that happen in our day, Perhaps maybe we should redefine what we think of the word table. In Ecclesiastes 8.15, we hear Solomon, who is the son of David, say, So I decided it was more important to enjoy life. The best that people can do here on earth is to eat, drink, and enjoy life. These joys will help people do the hard work God gives them here on earth. Here Solomon is struggling with the good, righteous people getting the short end of the stick while the wicked get ahead. But he's come to this conclusion that God is the one who will determine what comes to pass and is the final judge. So we should enjoy what God has given us. 
Now I've heard, eat, drink, be merry, more times than I can count, usually associated with a wine glass or some t-shirt with a wine glass on it. Can I assume we all have heard that phrase? Now how many of you have heard the last part of this verse? I never had until I had to preach on it today. Um, so let's read that second part again. These joys will help people do the hard work God gives them here on earth. The joy of eating, drinking, and enjoying life together will help us with the hard stuff. I would say that is pretty accurate and may be the key to connecting God's plan with our lives. When you have a rough day or you want to share some good news with someone, what do you usually do? Typically, I think we meet up for coffee or have a girls' night out or fellas' night in. I really don't know what you fellas do, but I imagine it could be something where you do something you love or enjoy together, right? When I came to North Cross, um, I thought it was the oddest thing that around 1230, we would get this text, lunch in 215. I typically didn't eat lunch, and actually my coworkers at my previous job um, made me put an alarm on my phone to remind me to eat because I would just work, 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 and I would forget that my body needs fuel and that I need to eat. So I was not really sure of what was going on around here with this whole lunchtime thing. But what I found is around a table, however we define table, um, with food, walls come down. I don't know if it's something in the air, the aura food creates, or, or what exactly it is, but our walls tend to come down, people embrace, and lives are shared. With the pandemic, schedules changing, and just life happenings, we only usually have month, uh, lunch together on Mondays now. Recently, we've had a couple holidays that have fallen on Mondays, and our schedules have changed, and this thing, this lunchtime thing that I thought was so weird, I find is something that I really miss when we don't have it. When we go back through Scripture and look at Jesus' ministry, many times stories were told and food was shared. In Luke 5, 27 through 32, Jesus eats with Levi, the tax collector, and sinners. Um, in Luke 7, 36 through 50, Jesus is eating with Simon in this very, like, prestigious dinner, and they're, it's open to the streets, I believe, and um, so people can kind of hear what's going on, but there's, like, this invisible barrier, right? You're not allowed to come in. And this uninvited guest comes to dinner, and is welcomed by Jesus. In Luke 9, 10 through 17, Jesus feeds the thousands. I thought, um, I, when I was looking up these scriptures and going through things, I found um, someone who said, meeting the basic physical needs of people often ministers more than words. And I thought that was so profound that you know, Jesus was feeding these people, and then he, he did teach them, and he did talk to them, but he was meeting their physical need. And when we meet someone's physical need, that gives the opportunity for conversations to bloom and to open up. In Luke 19, 1 through 10, Jesus invites himself to eat with Zacchaeus, that wee little man, Zacchaeus. Jesus didn't always have a table but made a table where he was and shared a moment with people. He met a physical need and opened up a conversation. Last year, North Cross did something different. Instead of your traditional VBS here, we created Neighborhood Kid Crew, where we took VBS into the neighborhoods all over the metro. We saw kids come outside that never came outside before. We saw families make connections and start building relationships with each other. We saw people step out of their comfort zones and share Jesus with others. 
it was an amazing testimony to what happens when we go outside of our box and invite others into something bigger. So guess what? We're doing it again this year. We, are, we have currently four host homes um, set up, and we're working on number five. We chose the theme, food truck party, not just because it was fun and who doesn't love a good food truck, but because what do all humans need? We need food. We need community. What better way to connect with our neighbors than through something we all need? The last few years have been tough, and we want to remind our neighbors that they are loved and cared for. If you're not participating in Neighborhood Kid Crew, there is still time to get involved. There's a donation uh, station outside in the foyer with items that we need to supply our host homes with all of their activities. We need host home partners who would like to help but not host. They just want to join in on the fun. We need people to simply pray for God to be at work in these neighborhoods. And I promise you one thing, that your life will be changed when you pour into the life of a child. If neighborhood kid crew isn't your thing, that's fine. Invite a neighbor over for dinner. Have a fire pit in the driveway. Roast some hot dogs. If someone new moves into your neighborhood, send them some cookies. They don't even have to be homemade cookies. I've never met someone who was disgusted by cookies. And if they are, well, you got your conversation starter. Find your joy in the everyday life that God has blessed you with. Without the joy of my aunt's life, perhaps her death would have less of a sting. Without the joy of seeing my husband enjoy all his favorite things, perhaps I wouldn't have gotten to experience his laugh. Without the joy of having strong dads in my life who support me, perhaps I would have never realized what it could be like. Without the joy of watching my pups snuggle my babies, chase a squirrel, lay in the grass with the chickens, or protect us with her fierce bark, perhaps the decision we have to make wouldn't be so tough. God will prepare you, friends, for whatever it is that he has in store for your lives. So eat, drink, and enjoy the life that God has given you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for giving us a table. A table that may not be physically here, but one that we're always welcomed at one that we can lay down all of our burdens, one that we can share all of our stories. One that we can just be at. Thank you for blessing us with some amazing people who have said yes to Neighborhood Kid Crew God, we ask that you work through them and through their neighborhoods and that you help calm any nerves and you help them take those steps outside the box and invite the neighbor down the street and you help them see the joy in a child's face as they make silly crafts or eat some dirt and worms or just have fun. Thank you for working in and through us. Thank you for giving us your stories. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, we have an opportunity to respond to the word by offering our gifts back to God. You can do that through the North Cross app, uh, through texting the number at the bottom of your screen. Um, going to playlearnshare.org or mailing your gift to the church. I do pray that this would be a part of your worship experience, that um, you could encounter God in the act of being generous. 
And as we sing this last song, Pursue, um, we offer to God that it's a journey and we're not done, that we seek and hope and trust in the one who has created us, who has made good things, um, who has taught us to delight in creation. We sing this song now to God. my eyes to see my king in majesty your grace compels my soul to love and draw it close I lift my hands and sing
The atmosphere's changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here Overflow in this place is all around that the spirit of 